Morning everyone. So it's another day in paradise and it's beautifully sunny today. And as it's going to be a hot one, that means I'll be working in the workshop doing the wiring along with my little helper. The truth is not that much help, but you know, he tries. Okay. Back at the workshop, a better idea. No, that's not too bad. I need to make some new doors. Those ones are just um, well, starting to fall apart. And the biggest problem is that with no power, it is a real mess. Because, well, things get dumped in here and forgotten about in the dock. So the plan for this time is to put in solar power, inverters, batteries, wiring, and get all that sorted out. Anyway, time to get on with it. So 9.30 in the morning, and the east side of that workshop is in full sunshine. It's early, but and the roof has a steep, steep pitch, so it's actually at a perfect angle, and that'll get full sun for the next couple of hours. The downside is that you could just see it from the road if I put solar panels up there, so it's a bit of a target. And, um, I may have to do it. We'll see. So step one. This is a external three-phase socket. I've wired the horizontal pair for live and neutral and the top pair um, actually work as the generator kill. Now on the generator they're wired into the ignition so if you shorten, shorten together the generator stops. Now that way I can get the inverter to turn off remote, sorry I can get the generator to turn off remotely when the inverter says the batteries are full. Okay, other side of the wall, a couple of 150 amp hour batteries. This is where the generator feed comes in. You just bring it up here. So we've got two, number 10 wires for power in. And we've got a generator kill switch. And across here we have power connection for the light switch. And we have another pair of wires which are generator kill switches. So you can actually kill the generator The bottom light switch which is handy okay other things here is a couple of lines that go up to the roof that connect up a, a very broken um, solar panel well, these are number 10 wires so they should be good enough for, yeah we can run four panels off that so 15 amps actually no they're number 12 so they're not good enough. We'll be replacing those. Okay, onwards. And let there be light. Yay! Oh my god, you can see what kind of a mess this workshop really is. So, this is what we've got. I've installed it down low. I intend to put a shelf or something above it. Put a charging station for my wireless tool, my cableless tools, battery powered tools. We have here this part's going to have to change. This is where the generator comes in. And this is the generator kill on this pair. Now the light switch, the third light switch, will short those together, which will kill the generator. Down here, there's a Raspberry Pi with a, a relay board. That will be talking to the inverter through its USB. And that will also connect to the generator kill. So that can turn that off. Um, so this is kind of the consumer unit. This here is a little 12 volt power supply. 
I have a few things I need to run off that of 12 volts. Um, uh, circuit breaker. It's actually in a, there you go. It's a differential breaker. So that's the safety part. This is for the, to isolate the generator, if I need to do that. This will be to isolate uh, power that comes from the house, because that will have its own independent solar setup, which can also supply power here. And these two here, um, this will be the combiner for the two solar um, strings. And all of this stuff here, breakers for, well, you'll see, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Just test the breaker. Yep, that's working. Can't really see the display on this panel, but it says it's pushing out 229 volts and it's 25% charged with no AC input. Because obviously generator is not running. Okay, so we'll turn that off. And we'll have to find some way to disable that very annoying beep. And we'll come back to this tomorrow. But yeah, we have power. We have light in the workshop. So, bit of tidying up. It's getting there. Yeah. So all of these beams, uh, they're going to get put on the foundation soon and I'll free this up. And the plan is to have a, a long bench that's 19 inches wide, which is the same width as that little piece at the end. And in the middle of that, or more or less around here, I'll put a mitre station. Where the sheet of plywood is on the floor, there will be a workbench. A bit smaller than a sheet of plywood. And at this end here will be the table saw. And the table saw on uh, probably yeah, left hand side. It's going to adapt it to uh, hold a, a router. So there should be plenty of room to walk around and do stuff. And also, if I can leave four meters space free at this end, I'll be able to park my little car in here and leave it. So yeah, there we go. More tidy up to do. And um, I'm done for the day. Okay, so now the power is done in the workshop. Um, got to think of a way of getting power to the house. So I noticed that down here in the bottom of the quebrada, there's a length of you know, quite a long length of this black hose, black pipe. Quite sure how it's got there, but that's going to make a dandy little conduit for power cables. So. Let's retrieve it and see how long it is. And yeah, almost the perfect length from the workshop. Run it along the road or edge of the road. Probably go the other side of go the other side of this tree, I think. There is a kink in it. It's probably why it was jumped. But I can just cut that and splice it. And it goes all the way up to the house. So that'll be perfect for running uh, power cables. There has to be two pairs of cables in there, number 10 cables. One that supplies power from the workshop to the house. And then the other one which will supply power from the house to the workshop. Um, both are going to have independent solar systems, solar inverters, and each one will be able to feed the other if required. At least that's the idea. Um, the house is going to have way more panels on it, so it'll be generating a lot more power. But the workshop will have way more batteries. So this way they can team up. The other thing I have to figure out is I need to run data. Obviously, you don't run Ethernet in the same conduit as power. Not if you want to be able to push any data through it. So, 
I'll figure that one out later. Anyway, there we go.